South Korea confirmed 39,450 new cases of COVID-19 as of 9 p.m. Tuesday. That's around 10,000 more than the same time week before. This comes after a couple months of a steady de decline in the number of infections. So are we now heading into another COVID-19 wave? Let's connect with Dr. Kim Zing-tech, head and professor at Zoonotic Virus Laboratory Institute, Pasteur, Korea. Good morning. Good morning. Now, COVID-19 is showing signs of being on the rise here in South Korea. With cases increasing compared to the week before, to what can we attribute the rise to? Well, for now, the uh, main reason is that the, our just immune status, so not just about just many just variant issues at the moment. So the, the, the immune uh, response that we actually generate after whether it is a vaccination or just a natural infection, there are actually two aspects of uh, uh, our immune responses. Number one is uh, neutralizing antibody production. And then number two is the uh, uh, T cell response. The neutralizing antibody is actually just a prevent just the infection. It's actually just preventing just the entry of the viruses to our cells. However, in the case of a T cell response, that actually destroy the, uh, destroys the infected cell. So the, uh, in terms of just the infection, but, but in terms of infection, uh, the neutralizing antibody levels is very important. But uh, uh, the, the thing that we have learned so far uh, for the last like almost now just uh, three years is that the uh, neutralizing antibody levels do, do not last forever. It just uh, declines after whether it's a vaccination or a natural infection. It, it declines after three or four months very rapidly. So then the, what, we, what it means that we, are, we can be uh, again just vulnerable to just uh, the reinfection. So the, the main point at this time is that the main issue, the reason is that our immune status has changed and that generally on the population levels, our just uh, neutralizing antibody levels are just, uh, just uh, declining so that we are becoming just uh, more and more as vulnerable to just a uh, reinfection. Right, and I want to shift focus to the symptoms now. There have been studies from overseas recently that report the general and most common COVID-19 symptoms have changed since the early stages of the pandemic. Now, a sore throat and runny nose seem to be the most common. What does this mean for the general medical response team in the country or the rest of the world? Well, those kind of symptoms that we actually observed since the emergence of just Omicron variant, one typical just uh, uh, symptom is that there is sore the throat. But in terms of just, uh, uh, just uh, uh, the treatment options, there is no change. The, uh, the, the treatment option that we have right now Paxlovid, Remdesivir, and then monoclonal antibody, and the uh, some molnupiravir, they are still just very effective against uh, just the new variant. So uh, in terms of uh, medical response, it is the same as before. Right. Now, to the question that we've all been asking for the past few months, health authorities say it's too early to take off the ma our masks indoor and that we'll probably need another three months. But there are signs of increase Will three months be really a uh, long enough time for us to be taking our masks off? Indoors, I mean. Yes, this is just basically based on the, uh, our just experience in the test and then also our just the observance of the uh, past pattern of the, the surge, which means just the increase and then decrease of the number of just the, the confirmed cases. I think uh, this uh, kind of a uh, mask mandate for now is the, I think this is a government just a precautionary just a step. Now we know that the, some uh, the foreign countries actually just lift up just a mask mandate in many just places, maybe perhaps ex maybe except for some uh, public transportation. So then the, uh, I think, uh, uh, so this is based on the, some uh, uh, past experiences, but the, uh, our government and then experts should just consider what would be our just uh, ultimate goal in terms of uh, just managing this COVID-19. So based on our just past experience, now just uh, uh, preventing just the infection itself is not really just a, a practical just aspect that in, in terms of the COVID-19 management, so that we are have to focus on the uh, preventing just a progression to just a severe diseases and then the deaths. So that in this case, what we have to consider is that how we can effectively just, uh, just protect the most vulnerable people, including just the elderly people, and then the people with the, some underlying medical condition and then immunocompromised patient, those should be our just the most focus in our just management of the COVID-19. That's right. And we've seen the last wave and we saw that the medical infrastructure was uh, well under control until uh, even at the peak. So, well, thank you so much right. for your insights this morning and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.